I am joined by Lori McNaught, Director of Revenue Management with the Olympia Companies, coming to us from Portland, Maine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Going to make it. It's Friday. <laughs> Getting ready. It is. It's beautiful here. Well, how have you been uh, throughout the pandemic? I've been well you know, in Maine. I'm here in Maine. Our numbers have been fairly low as far as COVID statistics. So, you know, we've, myself and my family, we've all been healthy and doing quite well, just adjusting to the new, the new normal. Uh, from a professional perspective, it's certainly been a lot of ups and downs over the last year and a half, a lot of changes and um, some some scary times and difficult times, but we're we're making it through. Yeah. Well, quickly tell us about Olympia. What does that look like? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Olympia Hotel Management has 26 hotels that we're currently managing. Uh, we do have a couple in the pipeline as well, and we really have quite a variety of locations and types of hotels. We have hotels in 12 different states, um, and they range from high end boutique luxury hotels to Hampton Inn with average rates anywhere from $100 to $1,000 a night. Uh, but our real specialty, our niche is in university markets. So we have hotels outside universities like UVA, FSU, U Chicago, Duke, uh, and we work directly with some colleges and universities to manage their on-property hotels. And what are you doing? Are you covering all those or are you just a handful of those hotels? I have a team. So uh, we have a team that are, are actually when we started COVID, there were three of us. And we actually, unlike a lot of companies, we actually added member a member to our team during COVID. So we, we now have four revenue managers uh, and we have the hotels divvied up uh, due to mostly due to brands. So we have one revenue manager who focuses mostly on independent hotels. We have another revenue manager who focuses mostly on Hilton brand. Uh, and then I work with, with all of them. And I also have a portion of those hotels that I work with myself. So how have you guys had to change how you do business because of the pandemic? Yeah. So it's funny because revenue, man revenue management is still revenue management. It's still, you know, being the, I, I say the gatekeepers of revenue at the hotel. Um, but it drastically, things really changed very quickly for us in the early days. You know, we, we went from hearing some cancellations here and there with international groups and weren't really sure what it's going to look like. And then very quickly, the cancellations started to come and, and they didn't stop. So we went from being the gatekeepers of revenue to focusing on revenue generation. And we really worked very closely with our sales team to, for a very long time, it was all about where can we find the business? Who's still traveling? Um, what companies, what type of people are still traveling? How can we get to those people? And then, you know, very quickly, again, in this past spring, it changed back to really at a lot of markets, not every market, but especially in the Northeast and in the real leisure heavy markets, it, it turned back very quickly to, okay, how can we yield these hotels? Because the demand was, was very strong and it's really been all about rate growth this summer. Um, but you know, the other thing that's been very different is it, all the revenue management systems and everything that a revenue manager does day to day involves data. And there was a period of time where we had no data. It, we had nothing on the books for the future. We had no history to go off of. We, and actually, to some degree, you know, some of that is still true. There was a lot of what do we think is going to happen. There was nothing, no facts to base a lot of our decisions off of. And it really was who had the clearest crystal ball. Um, and it, to some degree, it's still that way. And that's been very different for us. But but things are picking up. Well, let's hope it stays mm -hmm. that way. I know I know there's some things going on. Yeah. But I mean, how are you pricing your hotels now? Well, we've we've become very focused on length of stay uh, in regards to pricing, and that has a lot to do with some of the labor challenges that 
really everyone's having is it's hard to staff hotels and we're working with less staff than we've ever had in the past, but a lot of the hotels are, we're still selling the same number of rooms. So how can we be more efficient? And one of the ways we really identified that we can be more efficient is through longer lengths of stay, especially with COVID, we're not necessarily cleaning the rooms every day. So we've really um, dialed into the length of stay pricing and really found that, you know, we're going to give you a much better deal if you're going to stay four nights. And if you're going to stay one night, you're going to pay a little bit more for that because th there's more of a cost to us as a property. Uh, so that's been a, one thing that we've really looked at a lot in regards to pricing. And I will say, you know, the demand, the leisure demand in the Northeast has really allowed us to to push some nice ADRs this summer. I think it, it's everywhere from what we see on the STAR report. You know, everybody's driving rate. And we, um, I, I said yesterday to one of my revenue managers, I said, if you're comfortable, you're doing it wrong. Because, you know, we've really had to get uncomfortable with some of the rates that we weren't sure, you know, we would ever be able to get for some of these hotels and, and we're getting them. People are paying them and they're happy to be yeah. there. So it's been an interesting summer. Yeah. What about any uh, upsell uh, campaigns or anything like that? Ancillary revenue? Yeah, well, you know, we found, we definitely found some ability to, to package rather than discount, you know, where we've had times where we need to, where we have need dates that we need to fill in. But it's a little bit difficult because even our uh, outlets are very busy. Restaurants are packed, you know, and again, we have less staff. So we really haven't been able to package as much with food and beverage and, and that sort of thing. But we have found some opportunities in regards to room type pricing and really uh, maximizing those upcharges for suites. You know, people, they're looking for more space. They're staying a little bit longer. They want their, you know, privacy. That, and so we found that we have more ability to drive that top end room type more than we have in the past. How are you managing forecasting? Are you? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so we for, we are very focused on forecasting and we have been really since the beginning. We started to do a 21 day forecast every day and we haven't stopped doing that. And, you know, I really think that that's kind of the only thing we have right now is to look at the short term trends because mm -hmm. it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. And this it was what we learned last year is you know, it doesn't matter what you have on the book so much three months from now if everyone's going to cancel because there's a surge in COVID and, you know, people can't come because of travel restrictions. It doesn't matter what good a deal you give them. They're not going to come. They can't come. Mm -hmm. And that's what we found last summer. So really tightening up that if we're going to discount, if we're going to have need days or offers, it's got to be very short term. Um, and looking at those trends of, what am I picking up within a 30 day window has really become the most crucial for forecasting. It's just, it's too hard to know further out. And I do think we're past uh, most of that. I think, you know, we're probably going to have some ups and downs still as we talk here about the Delta variant and, you know, people are wearing masks again and, and there's, there's going to be some, we've actually had some cancellations um, from a few groups through the fall as well. So there's probably going to be a little bit of that before we, you know, get past that. And so it's just important to stay in tune with what's happening short term. All right, Lori. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. Sure. Nice talking to you. You bet. Have a good day.